This is the Kevin Simpson Show, expert insight and analysis from the industry's top investment professionals. If you'd like a deeper understanding of today's markets, this is the show for you. This show is sponsored by Capital Wealth Planning, providing covered call solutions for financial advisors. To learn more about their SMAs or ETF, visit CapitalWealthPlanning.com. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Kevin Simpson Show. Today, my guest is a good friend of mine, Christian Mangoon, the CEO of Amplify ETFs. And as always, my illustrious co-host, Mr. Jay Coulter. Uh, I got to tell you, Kevin, I'm excited for this interview because this gives us an opportunity to look at some of the issues financial advisors are facing today through the lens of product creation with Christian and then through the lens of the markets and the economy with you. So this should be a lot of fun. It always is when Christian and I get together, and I, I can't tell you how proud we are of being part of the Amplify ETF family. I mean, it seems like just yesterday, Christian, we were sitting down talking about the concept of actively managed ETFs and some of these niche ETFs that you were brainstorming. And it's amazing the innovation that, that Amplify and you bring to the marketplace. As we head into the second half of 2021 and beyond, what other innovations can we expect from you and from Amplify? Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Well, it's great to be partners on the Devo ETF, and you had the vision from uh, early on, seeing how that could be additive to kind of the income investors looking at uh, ETF strategies, and hopefully we'll get a chance to talk a little bit about that five-star rated fund uh, later in the show. But yeah, in terms of innovation here in 2021, we expect to launch a few more uh, thematic products uh, in, in cleaner living, uh, in some of the digital and online trading markets. Uh, we're seeing filings from other sponsors and defined outcome and buffer ETFs that seek to give you a, a portion of the upside of the market with downside protection. In addition, there's some thematic strategies that are coming out, uh, an ability to invest in themes, for example, from a core perspective, instead of maybe buying or selling one or two themes, investing in a core theme portfolio. And of course, uh, I didn't even mention Bitcoin ETFs that everyone continues to talk about. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on a Bitcoin ETF? Are we going to see one this year or next year? And really, just as importantly, does it make sense for there to be a Bitcoin ETF? Well, it's a real good question. Uh, you know, if you talk to me earlier in the year um, with Gary Gensler being the new head of the SEC, I mean, somebody who has a background in teaching a course on, on Bitcoin, I would have said probably good chance in 2021 we'll see a, a Bitcoin ETF. But a lot of the SEC testimony and comments lately uh, seems to point to 2021 not being the year for a Bitcoin ETF and maybe that setting up for 2022. Um, there's still some questions around the liquidity of, of, of Bitcoin in markets, I think, from an SEC standpoint. Um, certainly, there's other issues that have come up in terms of uh, Bitcoin uh, as a uh, a traceable kind of proven uh, monetary system. We've seen some bad actors, unfortunately, being uh, using Bitcoin of late with some of these ransomware attacks. So there's a lot of noise there. And I think it won't be till 2022 and until we see a Bitcoin ETF. And when we see one, I think we're going to see about 10 of them uh, launch. You know, Canada already has several uh, Bitcoin ETFs. We've even launched uh, an Ethereum <coughs> ETF or two. So they're opening it up north of the border. Uh, I think it makes sense to open it up south of the border here in the U.S. Currently, the only way outside of you know these digital wallets, uh, marketplaces like Coinbase to buy Bitcoin is to potentially buy some of these uh, trusts that are out in the marketplace. And they have some, uh, I, I would say, hair on them. Uh, some of that is the ability to trade at a premium or more importantly, a discount to net asset value. Uh, ETFs really take care of that issue uh, because of the arbitrage mechanism. We think that's important. Also, some of those packaged products to invest in Bitcoin in the US today are quite a bit more expensive than what an ETF would price at. So I think it's a, a positive step forward that there'll be uh, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency ETFs in the US in 2022, um, because I think it will offer some um, better uh, investor investor experiences in terms of cost uh, and pricing. Well, Christian, at, under the Amplify umbrella, you have a solution for people who want access to the space without actually having a Bitcoin ETF. Uh, tell us, tell viewers and listeners a little bit about the Block ETF. Yeah, so um, 
a little over three years ago, we launched uh, the first actively managed blockchain focused ETF. And this is an ETF that focuses on uh, stocks primarily that are involved with blockchain technology. Now, one of the applications of blockchain technology that gets really all the press nowadays is cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And certainly, uh, Block owns many of the uh, crypto exchanges, uh, companies that are creating crypto wallets, etc. So think of companies like Coinbase, Galaxy Digital, uh, Voyager. Um, these are all uh, company MicroStrategy. These are all companies in the news. And certainly those companies are very sensitive to the movement of Bitcoin. Uh, but in addition, you know, cryptocurrency, again, is just an application of blockchain. And the fund owns a variety of other uh, stocks that are working or investing on blockchain technology. We're seeing some very promising applications for blockchain technology. You know, blockchain technology is really about creating a trusted ledger, a trusted digital way to uh, interact uh, with information, uh, to verify ownership and, and provenance of, of goods and services. So there's some interesting applications in food safety, voting, um, property records, uh, mortgages, uh, loans uh, that are coming to market, and Block also invests in those types of companies. So this is a way to get a fairly high correlated group of publicly traded securities um, that uh, relate to kind of this whole cryptocurrency blockchain movement. Uh, Block is a five-star rated Morningstar fund and has about a 0.7 correlation uh, to uh, a Bitcoin. So something unique and really additive, we think, to core portfolios. This shouldn't be a, a core holding. It's really an explore holding or something that can complement uh, a high quality core portfolio, uh, similar to uh, like our Devo ETF that we work on with CWP. Excellent. So when Kevin and I prep for these interviews, one topic that comes up every single show is inflation. I want to play you a clip from Jeff Sott, who was on the show earlier this year and shared his thoughts on inflation and then we'd love to get your take. Uh, we decided that as long as the employment situation is a little um, sketchy, that we don't need to worry about inflation. And if we don't need to worry about inflation, we don't need to worry about interest rates going up dramatically. So Christian, it's the hottest topic of the day. What are your thoughts on inflation and more importantly, how advisors should think about it as they construct portfolios? Sure. Well, I think, you know, inflation is a risk. We're filming this on a day where CPI uh, came in a lot higher than people expected. Uh, and I think two interesting ways of combating it, and they're different ways um, and diverse ways, are the following. One is when you own a high quality blue chip portfolio like the Devo ETF, these companies have pricing power. They didn't become blue chip high quality companies without setting themselves apart for a long period of time. And oftentimes in an inflationary environment, they're going to be able to pass through, we believe, pricing on their goods and services to the consumer. Why? Because they're the gold standard in their industry. So I think that's one way to think about inflation from an investment standpoint. Another way is potentially to look at some of these unique themes that, uh, uh, that really are uh, moved based on different dynamics than interest rates or inflation. Uh, oftentimes, uh, the catalysts behind themes are quite different than the overall stock market. So, for example, the adoption of blockchain or cryptocurrency globally is a more of a catalyst for blockchain-related stocks than, than inflation, perhaps. Or, for example, in our cannabis ETF, legislation uh, and new medical discoveries uh, be it on uh, cannabis or maybe even CBD, are going to move those markets. And that's different than inflation. So I think there's two ways to think about it. One, again, is pricing power and high quality names that are going to be able to pass through any inflation to consumers. And then the other is focusing on themes that have different catalysts that may be more important to those themes than something like inflation risk. Kevin, as we sit here in June of 2021, how are you looking at inflation as you construct portfolios? Well, we we think that the inflation being as high as we're, we're currently seeing it is a temporary situation based on the reopening. We're not going to see 5% growth quarter over quarter consistently, um, in, in my opinion. At the same time, it, it, it's great to see it when you consider the fact that we went through a 14, 15 month shutdown and we see that the prices of goods are appreciating because there's a demand for it. And we talked before on the show about 
the unprecedented, I hate to use that word, but I throw it in there as a five cent word, uh, consumption prospect for um, the US consumer moving forward. So second half of this year, back to school should be amazing. Heading into holiday spending should be incredible. But I think that the, um, the growth and the spike in inflation should level off. The, the Fed's telling us that they, they certainly believe it, and, and I tend to agree. I was really interested, Christian, in your point about non-correlated assets that have tremendous uh, application, irregardless of inflation. So that, that to me, is uh, an, an important point in portfolio construction is building non-correlated portfolios around a core holding. And again, I'm not afraid to take a shameless plug, D-I-V-O. Uh, check it out. It's great. It's a great strategy. Excellent. Another topic that's been a real challenge for financial advisors is constructing portfolios with all of the bias we've had towards large cap growth for what seems like forever. So we recently had uh, Bill Harmberger on the show, the CIO of Benjamin F. Edwards. And Kevin asked him about how to look at this dynamic of the challenges with the large cap growth bias. Christian, I want to play you a clip. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. If you look over the last decade, point to point, you know, kind of the closer you got to large and growth and, you know, particularly some of those big tech and, and kind of, you know, new economy names, the better you've done. And, you know, it's certainly reflected in valuations. We just mentioned previously that valuations across the markets are expensive relative to history, but nowhere more pronounced than in large cap growth. Christian, what are your thoughts around this challenging dynamic for financial advisors? Yeah, so I think it's all about diversification. And, you know, if you bet on large cap growth the last 10 years, I think it's been a, a nice run for you. Uh, certainly, there's been some increased uh, volatility at times. Um, and I think, you know, when advisors are looking forward here in this kind of new environment, whether it's a recovery, uh, maybe a little short term spike in inflation, but you need to think about how can you have kind of a blended approach to uh, markets you know, we see with the Devo ETF, its blend of growth and value really shining in markets like this, um, you know, held up nicely during the COVID slowdown and then has really done nicely here in the rally upward. And the beauty of a blended portfolio is you also get some measure of income. So you're not betting at all, so to speak, on capital appreciation. You get paid along the way um, some healthy dividends. And in the case of Devo, even some option income, which we think is important. So, um, you know, we think to be measured is always good. Um, you know, the other side of the coin, I would say, is when you look at some of the innovative areas, uh, these niche areas of, of the marketplace, oftentimes you don't see a lot of large cap names. You see the smaller to mid cap names being emphasized in areas um, where, uh, either the theme or the innovative kind of investment uh, strategy is buying these emerging areas. So, you know, we see a lot of uh, small to mid cap uh, exposure in our uh, battery technology ETF, and our cannabis ETF, even in the blockchain ETF. And that may be a way to also diversify um, and still stay in the growth area, but come down from the uh, large market cap focus. Kevin, I know this is a conversation you've been having with advisors for probably half a decade. How should they be thinking about the challenges of the large cap growth bias in models today? Well, Bill's a smart guy, and that was a great uh, program. His insight into fixed income is, is um, fantastic also. I wish we had more time to get into that. But I always think of growth and value as a complementary uh, investment thesis. And just to Christian's point, it's not a question of either or. It's a question of combining two to have um, success in any market. If you're strictly value, if you're strictly high dividend zombie type stocks, you've got interest rate exposure. You know, these names have been such a proxy for fixed income that in a period of rising interest rates, you can get problematic uh, exposure from interest rate perspective in the high dividend stocks. Most commonly, they're talking about the growth names being affected by higher interest rates because the higher cost of the dollar moving forward and the lower uh, profit margin. But I love the concept of dividend growth because it gives you a little little foot in both uh, both pools. You know, we, we run a strategy that has an emphasis on dividends for sure, but by, by nature of a rising dividend portfolio, you can also have some growth names in there, which I think gives you the benefit of, of uh, both, both sides of the coin. Excellent. A recent guest on the show was Lenore Hawkins, Chief Macroeconomist at Tomatica Research. And Kevin and I had an opportunity to ask her about the implications of potentially higher corporate taxes which has kind of been hanging over portfolio construction 
I want to play a clip from that interview for you, Christian, and then get your thoughts. Well, margins aren't going to get better. <laughs> um, not when you're going to be raising the, the, the corporate tax rate, which is it's a, a bit complicated for me to wrap my head around because it's, it seems like you're driving with your foot on the brake. Right? We're, we're, we're doing all the stimulus spending from the government and then you're going to turn around and take more money out of the economy. So it's an, it's an interesting strategy. Um, I think from a global perspective, it's going to be very difficult to get everyone to agree on something like that because tax rates are a way that, com that countries can compete with one another. Um, I was just in Ireland a little bit ago and that's a tiny country. It's a tiny little island. It doesn't have a whole lot to offer other than fairly edu well-educated population. What it has been able to compete on is its tax code. And that drives everyone else nuts. So Christian, as you look at the challenges advisors have building portfolios, when taking into consideration the potential for higher corporate tax rates, what do they need to be thinking about? Well, taxes are always a, a big consideration. And, you know, unfortunately, over the last uh, maybe seven or eight years, um, you know, tax rates haven't been as much of a front and center issue. But it appears based off kind of the spending that's going to be happening in the country that there will be uh, more of uh, a tax, uh, corporate, higher corporate tax rates going forward. So, you know, I think that's going to be more of a front and center issue. Uh, in the sense that it used to be more of the you know tail wagging the dog, now it could be the dog depending on how high these tax rates go. And I'm going to maybe tap out here and, and take the easy way out because you know from an ETF standpoint, ETFs are some of the most tax efficient vehicles for investors to uh, access packaged products through uh, due to the creation and redemption process and some of the ability to do in kind uh, redemptions. ETFs really can minimize the ultimate tax impact for investors. So I, ultimately, I think this is very bullish for the ETF vehicle relative to some of the other package products that are out there. And, uh, you know, it's kind of turbocharges some of these investment strategies. If you can take an investment strategy and uh, kind of wrap it into the ETF side, if we get into this higher uh, tax rate environment, uh, we should see some nice advantages from a tax efficient vehicle like the ETF. Especially if you have uh, higher taxes on capital gains, right, Christian? That's right. That's right. Um, so, you know, trying to avoid those, you know, for some wage earners, we could see 50% uh, tax rates on capital gains if they're in the highest income tax bracket, at least based on some of the plans that we've seen proposed. So that could be a, a major issue for high net worth investors. And, uh, you know, the ETF should be able to help investors avoid that with certain investment strategies. So Kevin, from a portfolio manager perspective, there are clearly some implications. How are you and your team approaching the potential changes in the corporate tax code? Well, Jay, we're really not. You know, we, we need to be cognizant of what, what's happening in the world, but it's not going to change the way we select stocks. To Christian's point, if we have a little bit higher corporate tax rate, you can assume that the blue chip companies we own are going to be able to take, take care of that, handle it, unfortunately. Ultimately, you, you price that into the products and they pass it on to the consumers. I would like to, um, to to step away from the portfolio manager role for a second and applaud you on the high tech uh, it, it edits that you're putting in here. These clips are great. Uh, had I known that in advance, I would have uh, really carefully thought out my wardrobe. But so far, I'm not wearing the same shirt or jacket twice, which is a plus. The hair is a little funky in some of these pictures, but uh, well done, Jay. You make it easy, Kevin. You make it easy. All right. So. As we wrap this up, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, Christian, about the state of income producing ETFs today. Obviously, at Capital Wealth Planning, we have a high focus on dividend producing <laughs> securities and ETFs. What do you see in the marketplace today, Christian? Yeah, so we've seen more of a tilt in 2021 to access kind of these more blue chip dividend ETFs than really the last few years combined. And uh, Devo has really grown nicely and is approaching close to 500 million in AUM. You know, it's our five star rated uh, ETF that Capital Wealth Planning uh, manages. And it's based off their award winning and five star rated SMA that they've been running for years. And uh, we find that investors, based on kind of the experience they've had over the last year and a half, 
kind of this volatility with COVID and market uncertainty are you know more interested than ever in having a solid core portfolio like Devo, uh, like the EDIP strategy uh, to be their base. Um, these are blue chip names that are growing their dividends. And then in addition, have the ability uh, to the investors have the ability to see increased income from tactical covered call writing from the CWP portfolio manager. So this is a kind of the best of both worlds, if you will. You get equity market exposure, but you get paid along the way in terms of dividend income and potential option income. Very appealing for investors as they see the political environment uh, up in the air uh, over the last year and a half. They see taxes rising. Uh, they see um, you know a variety of geopolitical tensions coming around uh, and, and rearing their heads again. So I think this is a great option for investors for core assets. And, and um, you know whether it's the SMA or the ETF, there's some great opportunities. And I think ultimately this is a quite a bargain because they're priced quite aggressively and I think are very competitive and probably additive to any existing dividend or income exposure an investor has in their portfolio. Excellent. Kevin, as we wrap up, do you have any final thoughts on the state of income producing products in the marketplace? No, I feel like we should pay Christian and Bitcoin for that uh, amazing plug. I, <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. And, and the truth is, Christian and I have been friends for a really long time. And to, to see these things come to fruition is just so exciting. We we started the show by saying we couldn't be more proud to be partnered with Amplify. And I want to end the show on that note. They, they are a phenomenal, innovative company. They gain success with an ETF called iBuy that I'm sure is the number one ETF on the street in terms of internet and, and, and just phenomenal niche investing in that space. The performance has knocked it out of the park. And what we're seeing so many of financial advisors doing is, is finding capital wealth planning and learning about us through the relationships with Amplify. And as we see Devo become a core component and then the satellite niche uh, offerings around it, I mean, I think the sky's the limit. You know, we're just at the, at the tip of the iceberg in terms of what we're going to do together. And, and uh, again, not, not, not just a good friend, but a tremendous partner and we couldn't be happier. Kevin, thanks for the kind words. I appreciate it. Appreciate your partnership. And boy, you guys have hit it out of the park as a portfolio manager in uh, Devo, as well as certainly EDIP. And Jay, good to see you as well. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate both of you guys. And uh, congratulations on the success of the show. It continues to grow and grow the audience uh, You know, every uh, week. And uh, I'm not only a guest, but I watch it on YouTube. So uh, if you're watching, make sure you hit that subscribe button, YouTube users, because it helps out the show. Come back Excellent. to see us again, Christian. Excellent. <laughs> For more information on Amplify ETFs, please visit AmplifyETFs.com. And of course, for more information on Devo and the EDIP SMA, visit CapitalWealthPlanning.com.